Okay, good, good morning. I'm Bill Shaw from the Great Plains Laboratory, and I'm going to be talking about some of the, uh, the newer treatments in the field of autism. I may have mentioned a couple of these in, in uh, less detail yesterday, but we're talking in, in greater detail today. And, and most of these are, are covered in my new book, uh, Autism Beyond the Basics. It's available at the bookstore over here together with the, uh, the book on the fundamental treatments. And so all of this material is, uh, is, is very up to date and is very useful. So having this set of books is, will give you uh, a great opportunity to, to uh, follow up with the information you're, you're hearing over the weekend. And the first one I'm going to talk about is low cholesterol and the, the uh, discovery of it as a major new factor in the uh, diagnosis and treatment of autism. I, I put up some, I have a couple of slides of, of my uh, hometown, Kansas City, and I, I put these up as kind of a, a, a defense because some people when they hear Kansas City they go, uh, you know, and, and to show that it, you know, it's a, a decent looking place. And, and uh, it, it's kind of interesting that the, uh, the architect who designed this whole area of the city called the Plaza went to uh, Seville in, in Spain. The Spanish call it Sevilla. Uh, and used uh, Sevilla as the, uh, the architectural model for this section of, uh, of, uh, of Kansas City. And and, uh, and and so when I have visitors, I say that uh, you know that when when people go to Seville, the people there say their uh, city was modeled after Kansas City. And and uh, I got a little bit defensive because I was on a Southwest Airlines flight. And Southwest Airlines has the reputation of having people, uh, pilots and flight crew, who are sometimes a little bit of a smart ass. And so uh, for the whole time, the pilot cracked jokes about which member of the crew was sleeping with whichever other member of the crew in the middle of divorces. And all this personal information was, uh, was uh, discussed and jokes made about it during the flight. When we arrived in Kansas City, he said, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the wonderful town of Kansas City. Those on the right side of the plane look out your window. What do you see? Dirt. Lots and lots of dirt. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for those on the left side of the plane, look out of your window and look at this wonderful view. And what do you see? More dirt. And ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who can't, for whom Kansas City is the final destination, please find another travel agent as soon as possible. So, so, so this is my defense of Kansas City. Uh, and uh, I want to start with talking about a disease called SLOS because it was the key to unlocking a new finding about autism. And the name SLOS is a acronym, which means the letters stand for the initials of something, and the initials they stand for are the people who discovered this disease. Dr. Smith, S, Lemley, L, Opitz, and the S stands for syndrome. And it was a devastating uh, disease that was suspected of being of genetic origin because some couples had uh, more than one child who had this same disease. And when you have two, two children with the same disease, there's like always a suspicion that there could be a significant genetic factor. But the exact genetic factor of what was causing the disease wasn't known until fairly recently, in which it was found that every child who had this disorder had extremely low cholesterol. And you would think, with all the stuff there is on TV about bad cholesterol and everything, that these children would be very healthy. And, 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 and what they found was the exact opposite. These children were, were very sick, and that the lower the cholesterol, the sicker they were. With some children actually having zero cholesterol. And 
I, I, I don't want you to ask me about what are, is this the bad, is this the good, the HDL, the L. This is all the cholesterol, and some of the kids was zero. Uh, and they, as in many genetic diseases, the the prior the compound that was normally modified by a uh, an enzyme was accumulated. So this is like a log jam. When you have a log jam, everything accumulates uh, upriver where the log jam is. So the same is true in biochemistry. So 70 hydrocholesterol accumulated because there was a log jam, a particular enzyme further down, which I'll describe shortly, was not functioning correctly. And 75% of the children who had this disease were on the autistic spectrum. So this was a, an, an astounding uh, fact for me when I, when I uh, f first found uh, out about this. I thought this could be an important clue to autism and I decided to, to uh, look more into it. And it was found that the children had a characteristic toe in which the second and third toes are not separated but they're fused together in making the uh, letter Y. Uh, there's also a lack of speech, severe behavioral abnormalities, frequent temper tantrums, hyperactivity, violent outbursts, destruction of property, self-mutilation, uh, all symptoms that are common in people with uh, uh, autism. And the thing that wasn't common in people with autism is that they had Ultra light, uh, ultraviolet light sensitivity. So that was a unique feature. Um, these are uh, two brothers uh, who have this uh, disorder, and the characteristics are this uh, fold under the eyes. They're called epicanthal folds, uh, and uh, th th this is usually not present in Caucasian children, however, a lot of Oriental people have this. So Oriental people have this, most Oriental people have this, so they don't have the SLOS disease. But when Caucasian people have it, or, or Blacks have it, then it could be a characteristic of this illness. The nose was short, so kind of a pug nose, and the chin was uh, smaller than usual. So those are the common, these are two brothers who have the disorder. Uh, and this is the characteristic uh, feature. So if a child has autism and has these toes, uh, more than likely they may have this particular genetic disease. And there's all variants from people who have absolutely zero cholesterol to people who have cholesterol that is uh, close to the normal range. So the, the severity of the illness depends on the uh, amount of, of uh, cholesterol. And what was, what was funny is when uh, my uh, secretary was preparing some slides for me and she, uh, uh, I heard a scream in the other room, that's my toe, that's my toe. And so my secretary has the, the uh, SLOS toe, even though she has normal cholesterol and uh, doesn't have autism. So, so there are people who have this toe and, and who don't have SLOS, but if a child has this toe and autism, there's a high likelihood they may have this problem and the biochemical testing can find out for sure if that's what it is. So 90, something like 99% of people with SLOS have this shaped toe. Uh, 